Our leader spoke at Folsom, and when we go to Honorable Apony Markin's turn, I think that what he has done this morning has been despicable. And I speak against it because I am a daughter of a teacher who retired and sold in Medina Market. The examples that I found that has brought me to be a member of parliament includes, if you count 10 people, Professor Nana Jenopokwajiman, a former uh, Minister of State for Education, the first, a prof the the first female Vice Chancellor in this country, a school where Honorable Apanyu Markin attended. And for him to change the narrative, the discussion on the floor, to attack this woman the way in which he did, is totally, totally unacceptable. I take exception to that. And I, I think that we cannot, only on the 8th of March, celebrate Women's Day, International Women's Day, where we are, we are asking that we, we need mentors for our young girls to grow and become like. And for him to reduce this woman as if he was talking about his co-equal or his classmates, somebody who has taught you communication skills, a person who has been elected by the biggest party in this country to be the running mate to President John Dramani Mahama, what business has this woman's name got in the closing remarks of the Statement of the Nation Address? I, I am horrified. I think that I, 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 we deserve an apology from the leader for the way in which he has brought this woman's name into disrepute. And indeed, indeed, Mr. Speaker um, should not have allowed this to go on. The, de the second Deputy Speaker should not have allowed this to go on. It went on for, for a few minutes. For a woman, intelligent, yes. she has all it takes. Well accomplished, all it takes to be a running mate. She qualifies in every single way. In, she qualifies in every single manner. But we cannot be having this kind of talk. It's almost like trash talk. And we don't accept it in this chamber. And Honorable Afonio must apologize, must withdraw, and must do the need for. For somebody who taught him communication skills, this is not what she taught him. Nana Jane taught me as well. This is not what I exemplify. So he should better go back and revise his notes and do the needful. And this is a sign, and it implies that either he does not respect the aged woman even in society. Yes. Nobody has in this chamber, as of today, has spoken about the age of President Kufuado, who was equally old, Actually older. in fact even older, even when he came on the seats. So please, we demand an apology, and we are not taking this lightly at all. And the central region is very offended by this. He is from the central region. He should know better and he should do better. And the woman of Winneba should also rise up and tell him that what he's saying is wrong. His behavior is wrong. He should not be personalizing this. She has nothing to do with the state of the nation. The nation is, is, is in coma. It's comatose. You should figure out how they're going to fix it. After seven years, you should not be complaining about the NDC this or the NDC that. And we ask that the leadership of the MPP, together with him, apologize to us as members of the NDC and also to Nana Jane officially, because this was superintended over by the second deputy speaker. Some of us rose, we were on our feet protesting that he should stop him from going ahead. We are not happy. All the ladies here, please, let's stand against this type of statement. If a man at 70 plus could be a president, a woman at 70 plus could still be a vice or a running mate.